hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> Network's driving me mad. The Seven, just quickly, briefly. Oh, the Seven one. And what they mean to you? Come on, tell them. This guy here, Dean, is like a brother to me. He, he helps me to train. Sometimes when I don't want to wake up, he, he comes up to my house and if I, if he ring my phone, he don't answer. I ring my doorbell. This guy here, Dean, is like a brother to me. This guy here, Dean, is like a brother to me. This guy here, Dean, is like a brother to me. This guy here, Dean, is like a brother to me. Tell us about your relationship with Dillian. No, Dillian's my bro. I'm Peter Fury and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Porky's Corner because I've been a helmet of the month and you need to listen to me. <laughs> yeah? So follow him, yeah? And get the fella some followers up for Christ's sake. He wears his hat on his sleeve, the good man was. So follow Porky's Corner, he says it as it is and uh, you know, I appreciate the helmet of the month, Russ. No problem. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Let's move on. In at number nine, who have we got, Dale? We've got Dominic, Dominic Ingle. Ingle. The white Flex Wheeler. And what's he been doing this month? Flex. Uh, he's been charging, is it £4 a week for nutrition? £4 a month for nutrition advice. So Dominic Ingle, the man that got up one morning, age 52, and said, today I'm going to write a song about Eddie Hearn called Looking for Fast Car Eddie. We know a song about that, don't we, Dominic? So he's done that, and now he's charging £4 a month to tell you what cereals to have in the morning. What planet is he on? This is a man that's had one fight in his life and jumped on the floor. And his debut amateur fight. But all of a sudden, he's an, he's an expert on fighting and nutrition. Well, we all know what Dominic takes to get like that, don't we? And it ain't wheat a bit some frosties in the morning, is it? You know what I mean? Eh? It's spinning. Well, didn't he... Um, well, it looks like Kel Brook's fight in Crawford in November. But well, um, throw poor I, Brook under a bus against Crawford, are they? I, I well, can't they're good at that, aren't of... they? Crawford, who were other two? Golovkin. He went live and with him with Dicky Bow, didn't he? Who was that with Dicky Bow? Carson Jones. Life and death with him. Golovkin under the bus. Spence under the bus. And who, who Crawford? He, Crawford's better than them two. It'll be a fucking slaughter. I hope it is. I like Kel I think he's been treated like a fucking dog by all of them. He should have stayed with Fireball. But Dominic's not bothered. He just wants to get a penny under his belt, doesn't he? That's all they're bothered about. These people are fucking leeches. Dominic, you're a leech. Come see me. Anyway, enough about fucking Flex. I don't want to talk about him. He does me head in. He's a weirdo. Strange, strange man. In uh, number eight, who we got? We've got Darren Barker. So there's a few rumours doing the rounds that when they had this Jolly Boys outing at fight camp, that Darren Barker was pissed up and he was trying it on with all the uh, marketing girls. Yeah, I've heard that. I've also heard that he was staggering about like an oboe. Something like that all over the place. There's nothing wrong with that. We just can't get any insult for your old trip moment. We can, but we want the good stuff. Now, drugs are for mugs and boozers are cruisers. But this is how I look at it, right? Darren Barker, I don't like him. You know why I don't like him? Because he was ill and injured and didn't do any running or anything. But his fight was stirring. He turned up, came out swingers in round one and lost. That's why I don't like him. Because he just turned up, took his money and went. I don't, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. I think that... Uh, I think it's wrong. And, and, I, and I think it, it were a liberty with, with fans' money. What do you think? I think it's unforgivable. The fans in Germany jumped Unforgivable. Right? 
unforgivable what he's done. But he was brave. He was brave. He was good to say, Johnny. He was brave. He was good to say. He stuck it out. Why did they say you were, they were daring to be great going to Germany? They went to Germany because that's where money was and they knew we were injured. So why were they saying dare to be great? We're only talking the, about Felix Sturm anyway. They paid his pension for him, didn't they? A million pound. To be fair to Darren Barker, he had a rematch clause and never took it because he was that embarrassed about all hammerings he got off people like me. Darren Barker, if you see me, avoid me. <laughs> In at number seven, who have we got? It's Boom Boom. Ah, uh, not Boom Boom. What's he been up to this month? So, we've got Boom Boom in there because he's got a failed bar and restaurant business where many youngsters in the local community have been left jobless yet yeah, all Boom Boom can do is be slapping on his last dance oh, yeah. retire, retirement party and post pictures of his kids in Gucci Wellies. He's been posting pictures of his kids in Gucci Wellies and he lives in all. And he's got a failed business under his belt already. So that's why he's had votes then, is it? A catastrophic he amount of votes. Unbelievable. Hey. Oh, what? Unbelievable. And I think that this guy as well, I mean, you look all over his Twitter and he's posting pictures of himself fighting Chris Algieri in Madison Square Garden saying, dare to dream, dare to be great. But let's have it right. You open the show on an undercard as a B-side and he's making out like he headlined on pay-per-view. When, the, when has Tommy Coyle ever headlined? Who has he ever headlined against? He's never headlined as the A-side in his career. Not even in all? No. No. And they had to, the, the lucky that he even got to headline against Luke Campbell because he'd been dropped and smashed about by Martin Geffen in the fight before. And Martin Geffen, who'd had eardrum problems for a couple of years, his eardrum had gone and he had to quit on his stool at the end of the fifth round. Otherwise, Coyle would have been done. My mate's good friends with uh, Coyle family. Do you know his brother's a golfer and other one's a footballer? Yeah, he's just been sold by Leeds though, isn't he? Has he? Yeah. yeah gone, well, he's gone to Hull. I think he's gone to Hull. League one now. Tommy Coyle win a British title? No. He won a Commonwealth against Masha Dodd. Is that all he's won out of the six levels? A Commonwealth? That's it. There's no shame in that. There's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. If that's his level, then fair enough. And fair when play to the guy. Charles Adamo for, for uh, Commonwealth, I, I, I was jumping up and down on my chair like a banshee. So Commonwealth's a good boat. So he's done well to get the Commonwealth. But considering the profile that he's got and whatnot, you'd have thought he'd have had a British as well, wouldn't you? I remember when Derry Matthews fought and he iced him, didn't he? Victim. Lost every round though, Derry didn't he, until he got iced. Until Tommy got iced, didn't he? Or until he iced him. Well, Walder's made a career on that. It, yeah. That's what boxing is. Get your man yeah. out of there. Yeah, I suppose Derry, Derry Matthews, massive, massive puncher. Punches like a super middleweight, Derry. He's a freak of nature. Moving on then from old Boom Boom. Uh, in at number six, who have we got? Well, for the sake of this video, we'll we'll go we'll go with Tyson Fury as his name. Because I think I, I think that's what we think his name is. I think it's Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury. Uh, I take it he's been voted in because he's because of this Travellers Lives Matter thing, hasn't he? Yeah, there's been a surge of votes since Monday. Travellers Lives Matter. And the good well, no, all lives group. matter. Black lives, white lives, traveller lives, Asian, Por Chinese, Porky's lives, eh? Porky lives, Porky lives, yeah, Porky follower lives. Well, everybody's lives matter, but when you've got a fight to sell against Anthony Joshua, you need to find an angle, and it looks to me like they're going for the Larry Holmes versus Jerry Cooney angle. You know, the black versus white. Black versus Traveller. Looks like they're going for the race 
issue to sell it because there might not be no fans in the arena. They're going to charge 40, 50 quid for it. So they're going to need to whip up a storm. That's what I think. Uh, that, that's what I think. I, just, I, know, I know people can say, Bogey, you're being harsh against travellers. Listen, travellers do get a raw deal from pubs and car dealerships and stuff like that. But on the other hand, you can say that travellers cause loads of problems in pubs, don't they? You can also say that travellers you know, might want to car forecourts and drive off in cars and say, oh, I'll let you know, mate, I'm not going to buy it, or they might just drive off and not come back. People are always going to have digs at people, but normal people like me cause problems in pubs, and I've took cars for spins and said, I'll let you know, mate, and wasted people's time and caused loads of bollocks wherever I go. Everybody from every sort of race causes bollocks. So maybe Tyson might have a point there, but he's had six months to come out with his Traveller's Life's Matter thing. Why weren't he doing it six months ago? Why now? Is it cost him out of the Joshua fight after Christmas? I don't know, but I just think that... I'm a bit sceptical about anything that comes out of Tyson's mouth, to be honest, because they contradict themselves all the time, aren't they? So does Eddie Earn, so does Joshua. I mean, Joshua's the Black Lives Matter man, isn't he? And Tyson criticised that, didn't he? Now he's doing the TLM... People are going to criticise, aren't they? So, but what they've done, they've found an angle where if you criticise Black Lives Matter, you're racist. If you criticise Traveller Lives Matter, you're, you're racist against travellers. If you criticise mental health and depression, you're, you, you, you're against that, you're a hater. For example, if you, if you work for me and you don't come into work on a Monday, I'll say, listen, that happens again, you don't roll, get gone and you'll go, okay. Tuesday you don't come in, I sack you, you go, oh, you can't do that, I've got mental health issues. Where do I stand then if you've got a contract? Where do I stand then? Where does Kevin stand then here with, with, with people that, that pull that one on you? You're going to tribunals, aren't you, and this and that. People are finding ways around stuff. We're going to ban you for 12 years, you've got free drug test issues. Nandrolone cocaine and you failed one, that's 12 year Tyson. Oh, I've got mental health problems. You can't do that. Are we going to drive a car at the bridge? What are they going to say to that? What are they going to say to that? You can't stop me anything. earning a living. You can't say anything, can you? Because if he does anything, you'll get blamed. Oh, we'll give him a two-year back later. Liam Cameron, you've been found guilty of taking cocaine. What you got to say for yourself? Nothing. I didn't take it. Four-year ban. What if Liam says then he's got mental health? If he'd said it before, he might have been all right. There's got to be some middle ground here. It's got to be evened out fairly. We wish Tyson all the best, but anything he says that I see now on social media, I ain't interested. I just look because once you've said one thing and lied, like I don't believe the charity thing, do you? I don't believe that millions to charity. If you ask him about it and they shut you down. Once you tell a lie, you've got to tell another. So they shut you down, don't they? I didn't believe that. I don't believe the mental health one. I don't believe it. They can say all they want. I don't believe it. That's my opinion. Well, I wish him well. He's best every way out of there. But I don't believe it. But if they found a way to get out of situations, good luck to him because they're chameleons, aren't they? But I just don't believe it. I don't believe all this TLM. A million people are going to march in London. Well, let's see. But when he does fight Joshua... They might just overkill it with all this BLM versus TLM and people might just go and turn off. That's what I think. It's my opinion. Nobody else is going to say what I've just said there. Nobody. Nobody. But it's just an opinion, isn't it? You don't mean to say I'm a hater, bitter, jealous, twisted or whatever. I'm saying what nobody dare say. Tyson's welcome on here. But if he don't come on, then I'm still going to move forward. I don't believe it. Eddie Hearn don't believe it. I know for facts, I've heard that. But they're not going to come out and say it, are they? Because they don't want loads of people giving him aggravation. I don't believe it. But I hope he punches Joshua upside down, and I think he does. Because Joshua is the biggest fraud out there, and Tyson probably plays with him for 12 rounds and takes him out at end of fight, or does him inside three rounds. If he wants, he can take him out at any time. That's how good he is. 
Only person who will beat him out of this current crop is himself. So he has to be given credit. But he's got two world title wins, hasn't he? He's not defended the belt yet, has he? So all this about the greatest ever heavyweight. No. Joe Lewis, how many defences has he got? 26, was it? 25. And his Larry Holmes has got 20. And his Tyson got? None. So, don't be saying you're greatest ever when you've not had a defence. ABI has, ABI has had more title defences at any rate than Tyson Fury. Anyway, moving on, we wish Tyson well. Number five. I'll let you uh, introduce this one. It's Johnny! He's always there or thereabouts, isn't he? <laughs> Johnny knows what Johnny is doing this month, Dale. <laughs> Oh dear. Well, it's got to be the heartfelt, grovelling, begging bowl apology on IFL about the lucky punch. Johnny Nelson's come out grovelling like the sh piece of shit coward that he is. <laughs> grovelling, Johnny. Horsecock <laughs> Nelson, Mandingo warrior, whatever you want to call him has crawled out of his hole and he's grovelled about the Povetkin knockout, saying, well, I've had a second look at it. And do you know what? He set it up perfectly. Of course he set it up perfectly, Johnny. You know you were a world champion boxer. Stop going with the company line. Anyway, I don't even want to give him airtime. He's become embarrassing, Dale, hasn't he? He's become totally... It's a disease. It's a disease what he's got. Johnny Nelson is a disease, and I'm the cure. Right, in at number four. Here he is. Here he is. <laughs> Juggy. It's Juggy. What have you been doing this month? Well, we've got a failed podcast, a failed podcast tour. He's getting pissed on the Sky expenses, on the payroll, yeah. staggering about. Like a hobo. And now he's trying to sell a nutrition plan and he's put the price up on his Twitter in dollars. Well, this is how I look at it, right? Spencer Oliver, you're a gimp from Gimpfell Island. The worst air transplant I've ever seen in my life. Go on, fuck off. I don't want to talk about you. Who's in at number three? It's the man himself. It's Eddie Hills. Eddie Hills, 4-0, undefeated, super, am super heavyweight amateur star, free by way of... Eddie Hills. Eddie Hills. Golf, golf agent, podcaster, author, singer, boxing promoter, boxing manager... Comedian. Dance director, football director... Jack of all trades, master of one. And that's boxing promotion. And that's only selling himself, isn't it, really? How many interviews has Eddie Hearn done in the last 12 months on IFL? How many has Joshua Boatsy done? Olympic bronze medalist. The next big thing at light heavyweight. How many have we seen in Boatsy and Callum Smith, a ring magazine champion? And how many interviews have we seen of Eddie Hearn? He's everywhere, isn't he? They've even got an Eddie Hearn action figure. I mean, what sort of person got up in the morning and said, today I'm going to design an Eddie Hearn matchroom uh, action figure. Oh my fucking good God. Get some well, that's not, even the, that's not even the best, is it? I mean the fact that the fact that he even went the fact that he even went on an interview and said that Dillian White was up at eight. He's absolutely horrendous to me. He had to get scraped off the canvas by the paramedics after about four or five minutes of having gas and air at ringside in the recovery position. And he said he was up at eight. Is this what, what we're now being lied to? We're being lied to now about facts, about, about stuff that we can see with our very own eyes. He's telling us a completely different story. Yeah, is it? What, what, oh, Eddie, you're lying. You're fucking joking, aren't you? 
the jump out in his mouth, he's made lying in a fucking art form, man, eh? What about Dylan White, eight seconds or seven seconds on the floor? It's just horrendous. He like must that. have been responsible for the auto cue to Michael Fish to tell him that it was going to be sunny outside and it pissed down. Seven seconds away. Yeah, it's... Uh, well, so this, is, this is how I look at it, right? Dylan White got iced. End of fucking story. Is it, he got iced. Is it ice, ice, baby. He got iced. He got vanilla iced, right? And that's it. Get over it. You shouldn't even be nowhere near Povetkin in a rematch. They're doing the David Price, aren't they? Straight in with Tony Thompson again. Dylan White, if he gets beat in this match, could end, in this fight, so he could end up on Skid Row. He could end up with Dave Allen a boxing, but I don't think he takes it personally. And another another thing while we're on about Eddie Earn, Eddie Earn told a fucking massive lie. Because I checked up. He said that when the pandemic hit, the Joshua, uh, the, sorry, the Chisora Usyk fight got cancelled, and they only refunded five percent of people. At, the other ninety-five percent said they'll wait for the new date. That's lies. That didn't happen. That did not happen. So why why is he coming out with rubbish like that? Why say that when it didn't happen? We know people who work at the arena, and that's not true. That isn't true. That's another one of his whoppers. <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> it's whoppers, aren't they? Every time he, something jumps out in his mouth, and it's a lie in it, and he must know he's doing it. But then again, do half of these people that are on internet every day? I mean, Tyson's not fought since February. I've, I've been seeing him every single day. Some some out there. He's on IFL every day. Isn't he? Coogan, make sure you get this in. I mean, why is Coogan even putting all that from that? TLM thing. What's he, why is he putting that on his channel? What's that got to do with boxing? What? What is that to do with boxing? See, this is where his Coogan's got himself in a position where he's the mate, and they're telling him, get this on your channel. He's, you want, they won't say that to Andy Scott at Sky, would they put this on your channel? Or Rob Tebbett at Boxing Social, because they go, ooh, don't want to say it about that. Might, get into, might, might end up in co causing me to send loads of problems. Bottom line is this, right? Eddie Earn is a born liar. Tells lies. So if they can lie to you once, they'll lie to you again. So if they lie, anything else to say to you after that? It's no good, is it? You know in a court of law, you get caught lying. One lie in your evidence, the whole case collapses. Why do you think all these uh, rapists get off? Because they only need somebody to, to, to lie once on dock and get found out. It's like building a wall up of evidence. They build a wall of evidence. Ten, they have ten witnesses, so you've got ten walls built up. And if each one of them tell a lie, defence knock it down. So at the end, there's no wall. So that, that's how they get off. And it's the same with these. They're putting in my hands for content. Putting in my hands. I can lay in bed at night watching <laughs> telly. I'm like that with remote. Summit pops up on the screen, I just lean over, side of my bed with my pen, and I jot summit down. And then I've got sheets like that. <laughs> Shoo! I've got big sheets like that, mate. When I wake up next morning, I'm like, look at that, content. It's putting my hands, pulling people up on this. But, moving on, who we got at number two? Who we got at it? Oh, We've no. got Adam, Adam Smith. Not B! Could have been, could have been, should have been, never been, bait bean, creepy bean, beanie, beans on toast. My mate Mark Siddle calls it beans on toast, don't you, Mark? Beanie! Old Rumpel Stiltskin! Where's the bodies? Where's Madeline McCann? That's what we want to know. Right. It's good to have the heavyweights back, Paulie. His investment, <laughs> uh, early investment to the body, it'll pay dividends later. Yeah, do you know Adam Smith, right? He's the only man in world boxing that can make a boxer punching another boxer turn into like an investment at, at, at Goldman Sachs. He's like, these punches will be in uh, pay dividends later. It's like putting money in an ISA, isn't it? We had Adam Smith, you know, as a commentator. 
Rough, tough, rugged, durable, all action, compelling, endurable, added spice. Well, <laughs> added spice. Where, where would we call it Art Bean, though? I mean, Bean is the, the one of our jokes, isn't it? But do you know why? Because he just looks so out of place, doesn't he, around these, this boxing scene, doesn't he? Does he look out of place? And do you know everybody who's around him? They all say the same thing, but they're not going to say a word, are they? Do you know why? Money talks and bullshit walks. So... Who's in the number one mandatory position then for, for this month? So the number one mandatory to our champion of the month is, of course, there's only one man who can fill the mandatory position, and that's Dillian White. Dillian White, a.k.a. a thousand days mandatory. But he were number three a thousand days ago, wasn't he? Because we've got the proof, haven't we, from the WBC. So Dylan, three... Is not one, and you were never mandatory. So stop with this mandatory a thousand day bullshit. You was number three behind Brazil and Ortiz a thousand days ago. So Dylan, stop it. Stop, stop, stop. We are lies. You got offered a world title against Joshua at Wembley, and your arsehole fell out. Stop it. I don't want to talk about Dylan White anyway because he's on Skid Row. L Lucas Brown. We're not fighting the Vecchi, mate. Right. Lucas Brown. Lucas Brown, two years inactive, two two stone overweight. Who else have we got after that? After Malcolm Big Daddy Tyler. Brown. Robert Elenius, who shook him to his boots. Malcolm Tan, whacking a stinker. Rivers and Parker in Life and Deaths. Chisora twice in Life and Deaths. Is his oh, CV even it. that he's good? Yeah, we did. If Terry O'Connor, big fat Terry, had been on his game in the 12th round, he falls into the ropes and Terry calls it a slip when actually it was a punch and it should have been ruled as a knockdown. Terry O'Connor, I'm calling for you to resign from Boxing Board of Control. You stitched Huey Fury up when he fought Parker and you stitched Chisora up as well, didn't he? Cost Chisora the fight, that 12th round. Which, 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 which fight was this? Chis uh, White Chisora won. Which Chisora White, yeah, he stitched Chisora up, did he? Yeah. Yeah, because in the 12th round, he falls into the ropes, but it was off a punch, so it should have been ruled a knockdown, but he gives it as a slip. Fat Terry does. Terry, Terry O'Connor, you need to fuck off, mate. Get out of Dodge. You're no fucking good. You've had your nose in trough fucking years. Go on, piss off. Let's get some new blood in. People who know what they're fucking on with. Instead of people like you, hanging out at fucking back of promoters. Right. Who have we got in the champion position? It's the one, the only. Mr. Vacant, Mr. Disappearing Man, Bomber Bellia. Yeah. Is that Anthony Bellia, the man that's never won a belt off a champion? That's the one. British Commonwealth European and World Champion. All vacant. Two and three in world title fights. Two and three in world title fights. Who did he beat in world title fights? Macabre. And Blowjob and... Flores. <laughs> <laughs> Blowjob Blow Job Flores, who turned He up had more his... pay-per-views than the great living legend, Carl Froch. BJ Flores, who turned up with his PE kit. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Uh, is it true that Tony Bellew was going in for an operation to get his head removed out of Eddie Hearn's arsehole? <laughs> at Claremont in Sheffield, because we've got a discount on at the moment. Shout Unbelievable. For, uh, aftershave. It was a landslide victory as well, by the way, on the votes. Go on, mate. It was a landslide victory. Landslide victory? I don't know about that, mate. I don't know about that. What I do know is this, right? Tony Bellew's played the game, hasn't he? And he's made himself and his family secure for life. But they've done it by spinning narratives on the Sky platform and an IFL platform and on the social medias, right? His record doesn't warrant the money that he's earned, but is he bothered? No. So I give him respect. I mean, he even ended up in a Rocky film. I mean, what the fuck? So we have to give him credit. 
We have to give Tony Bell your credit, but he is not technically better than Usyk. But I still think he comes back and fights at heavyweight. I'll always stand by that. He will come back because sooner or later they miss it that much that they want to come back. And if he did come back, I could probably get behind him and cheer him on. I could. I'd get behind that because I know he'd get bladdered. So I'd cheer him on. Because every time I backed against him and then accumulated, he cost me about eight grand. Four accumulators with him cost me about 8,000 quid, Dale. Every fight won, except the one, I always got the one wrong he were in. Unbelievable. And then when I did back him, Usek did him. So I can't win, can you? You can't win. So Tony Bell, you. Oh my God. He sent me into meltdown every time it, my bet went wrong. But you've got to give him his credit. He has to be given credit. But don't be telling me that you're going to disappear and then be on your telly more than ever. And don't be telling me that you're technically better than Usek or you're going to do this and going to do that. You're going to fight a Fury one. He wasn't all that about. Old Fury out, didn't he? He said he was a bigger puncher. He's not a bigger said... puncher than Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury is taking to university, mate. And what other guy are going to fight as well? Wilder. Wilder, didn't did he? Well, the man just says things for air, air time. And we have to pull these people up on it. We don't mean any harm. We're just having a bit of comedy, but we're sifting through the shit. Because you know shit. Shit, shit gets up bottom of your shoe and you've got to get rid of it. Because it leaves fucking stains. So I think that's about it. Is that the top 30, Dale? International uh, Elements of the Month for September 2020. Yes. Tony Bellio is the champion. Dylan White's the mandatory. In the silver position, we've got Bean. Run of Bean, could have been, should have been, never been. Baked Bean, some toast. Creepy Bean, Beanie. Rumpel stilt skin, where's the bodies? And in the bronze medal position, Eddie Hills, 4 0, super heavyweight amateur star, three by way off. That's about it, Dale. Peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing, Dale. Don't forget, I'll leave you in charge of the inserts, all right? Good man. So, thanks for coming on. I'm going to go out for a spotty lunch now and I'm going to turn my arm off at the snooker club in Woff <laughs> for my daily two o'clock appearance Monday to Friday, two hours a day if anybody wants to come and take me on bring your cue, tenor a frame Peace out Dale, keep on trucking thanks for coming on, you've been a pleasure and I will see, see you later you soon. All right? Peace. see you later <laughs> you like that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me. PokyCorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking. <laughs>